What's bleaching my rectal cavities? I'm Robert Evans, host of Behind the Bastards. And as you can guess from that exciting, hype-filled introduction, we're going to be talking about bleach today. That was be- that was course, better than my bleach intro that I just said. That was better. Yes, yes, fine, Sophie. Yes, fine. nobody I'm knows what TikTok is. You Only like the, the TikTok know. videos I send you, so... I I claim to like them um, <laughs> for politeness's sake, and well, also for politeness's sake. Let me introduce my guest for today, the only person I could have on to discuss the Bleach Church, Mr. Billy Wayne Davis. It is it is so good to be here in such terrible circumstances, you guys. Terrible circumstances. How are your circumstances doing, Billy? Other than terrible, they're fine. They're fi- I mean, I. I can't complain about my lifestyle and or anything right now. It's just more like wish I knew what was happening. Yeah, we all do, don't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um the answer I think generally is uh not great stuff. Not great stuff is happening. Real yeah, mixed bags. So speaking of mixed bags, were you did you did you get on the news at all last week? Check it out, see what was going down. Yeah, our uh, our Twitter our our friends on Twitter really let me know what was going down yeah, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so uh, yeah. To catch everybody <laughs> up, about a year or so ago, um, you you and I sat down to talk about uh, the Genesis Two Church uh, and its founder, uh, a fellow named Reverend Jim Humble. And the Genesis 2 Church has a sacrament that, I, as far as I know, is unique in the annals of religion um, and also involves anal, so that's kind of funny. Uh, except for it's not because the sacrament is pouring bleach up children's assholes to poison the autism out of them. Um, so it, I shouldn't have let in with a joke to that because it's just horrible child abuse. But that's what we talked about. It was a fun episode. Everybody really seemed to enjoy you and I talking about bleach. Um and I, you know, Billy, I I never thought I'd be looking back on 2019 as 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 bright halcyon days. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> that was a yeah. That was a lighter time. <laughs> we had a lot to laugh about back then. It. Re- I mean, everyone reminding me on Twitter of mm-hmm. what was happening made me immediately just be like, oh, this is. This is not fun. This is bad, you guys. Because we were really making fun of it. Like, this is just the most obscure bullshit you've ever heard of. Exactly. So. It's it reminds me a little bit of how when I was when I was young, you know, 19, 20, 21, driving all around the damn particularly driving around the southwest, you know, uh the desert and stuff. I listened to a lot of Alex Jones just because he was so silly and so fun. And I just, he w- he felt like this like fringe secret that like me and a few friends had that there was this like Looney Tunes dude on the radio and he, he would say all sorts of nutso stuff. And it was, it was very fun. Um, and then all those people got killed um, by InfoWars fans. And suddenly he was a lot less funny. And the Church of Bleach has had an arc like that. We, we, I mean, not really, actually. I don't, I, we never should have enjoyed the Church of Bleach so much because it was always based fundamentally around horrific child abuse. But for some reason, maybe that were bad people. It, it felt more lighthearted a year ago. <laughs> I yeah no that's a good way uh, to that, put it. That, like, that no, I just it made a, me feel yeah. superior for a little bit. Uh, that's yeah, nice. and that's probably shouldn't have. But we we laughed about the Church of Bleach as horrible as it was, and I guess it was it was one of those things where it was always bad. Like all the stuff we talk about on the show is bad. So like you could argue we shouldn't be laughing about any of it, but we do because it's a way of coping with the horror. But it felt like a like a fringe thing. Like it was this. It was this. This is horrible for these few dozen families and stuff, but like, surely something this dumb, this like it, un- unabashedly it felt like stupid, that drug could never crocodile. be a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this has to have only happened to a f- like like in a couple of limited cases, right? It can't be a regular yes. thing. Yeah, but it is. Where it's like ah, they heard about it and then they kept doing it, so it's like ah. I yeah, don't care. it's like if it's so. like someone opened a bar for crocodiles, and and suddenly drunk crocodiles became like a major danger to life and limb. Um, yeah, so well, there were a couple stories before Trump got a hold of it where I was like, 
I think I brushed it off because my brain couldn't comprehend that it was getting some mainstream stuff. I was like, oh, this is just in my zeitgeist because Robert and I talked about it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we talked about the bleach guy. The it, but it's it's spreading, Billy. M- much like if you if you drop bleach on your favorite pair of uh, bright red trousers. Uh, a, a white decolored spot will spread upon the pants. Uh, the cult of bleach is spreading throughout the United States. Um, and it, it, it does not appear to be abating anytime soon. And it received a major shot in the arm last week when the president of the United States, one Donald Jonathan Ames Trump, uh, said, and I quote, I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that by injection inside or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets in the lungs and it does a tremendous number on the lungs. Now, he said this during one of his one of his uh, big addresses to the media that he was doing every single day. Uh, and because he said this, he is no longer doing those every single day. Um, because there was, there was a bit of an outcry to this one. Now, the president... Did- he is the answer to... the eternal question like i mean what's the worst that can happen put him out there and then they, they're like shit he he did it again oh he it was it the again. worst yeah so um the president got up in front of america and he he made that statement he did not suggest that people drink or otherwise ingest bleach uh he didn't mention bleach at all he just said disinfectant um and people kind of filled in disinfectant with bleach uh yeah and it's one of those things where like it's very frustrating on both sides because on one hand you had a bunch of people saying Trump told everyone to drink bleach and he he didn't tell everyone to drink bleach. He talked about injecting disinfectant, which is equally dumb but different. But at the same time, all of the people who do drink bleach, namely our friends at the Genesis 2 church, saw his words as an endorsement of their sacrament. Hours after the president's statement, Genesis 2 Archbishop Mark Grennan posted this to his Facebook wall. Trump has got the MMS and all the info, three exclamation points. Things are happening, folks, one exclamation point. Lord (laughs) help others to see the... I laughed again. I'm (laughs) sorry. It's it's when he said things are happening. It's like every time you're like, I can't, you guys. I can't. I want to help you, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lord help others to see the truth. Uh, And truth is capitalized with one exclamation point. Now... Is, so that that's Mark Grennan, who's who's the Archbishop of the Bleach Church. Uh, another Trump fan who saw his words as an endorsement of drink and bleach was Jordan Sather, a prominent voice in the QAnon community. Jordan has more than 151,000 followers on Twitter. He has 222,000 subscribers on YouTube. He is a vocal advocate of drink and bleach. He responded to the president's statement with a tweet quoting his words and then saying this. Do you realize how freaking cheap and easy it would be to mass produce chlorine dioxide for hundreds of thousands of people? We could wipe out COVID quick. The biggest hurdle is education, which is difficult with how shit our media is. Doctors should be learning about this stuff. (laughs) He's got some kernels of truth in there. He has some kernels of truth where he's like, the the problem is education. That that is accurate. And we could... It is accurate that with enough bleach, we could wipe out COVID-19. Like, if you drowned whole cities in a wave of yeah. bleach, that COVID-19 would no longer be a problem. There yeah, would be if other we just problems. focus, yeah, well, we're not, we're a yeah. singular focus here. That's all we're doing. Mm-hmm. You said to get rid of it. I, yeah. You didn't say not kill everyone. You yeah. didn't say that. Yeah, you, so. could, you could wipe out COVID-19 with bleach in a similar manner to how you could wipe out COVID-19 with a hydrogen bomb. Um, uh, it's now we're talking. Now, now we're, we're talking. talking about solutions. Yes. yes, and this episode of Behind the Bastards is supported uh, by the hydrogen bomb, which is, of course, a product <laughs> of our main sponsor, Raytheon Industries. No. Raytheon. No. Why not kill everybody? Come on, let's do it. Let us yeah. do it. Come on. So uh, that's Jordan <laughs> Sather. Now, Twitter removed that message that Jordan Sather uh, uh, put up, and Business Insider went to Twitter for a statement on exactly where the line was for people like Sather. And I think they were basically like, a lot of other people are still talking about drinking bleach, and they haven't been banned. Like, where is your line? And I, I want to read you the response that Twitter spokesperson gave, because it is a masterclass in weasel words. Quote, We're prioritizing the removal of COVID-19 content when it has a call to action that could potentially cause harm. As we've said previously, we will not take enforcement action on every tweet that contains incomplete or disputed information about COVID-19. 
So telling people that bleach might help with COVID-19 doesn't cross the line. Telling them to drink it crosses the line. Because if you're just saying COVID bleach bleach seems like it helps with COVID-19, that's disputed. But if you're telling people to drink bleach, that's Twitter's line. So that's an interesting line for Twitter to have taken. <laughs> that is a line that a room full of Twitter's lawyers spent, I don't know. Yeah. I would say yeah. an extra two days just to jack up the price and then be like, here's the line we came up with. Isn't that funny? Here yeah, we go. it is very funny. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a. Uh, a movie, I think it's a pretty good movie. Some people have their critiques of it called Conspiracy. That's like a made-for-TV movie about the Wannsee Conference, which is where um, Reinhard Heydrich and uh, Adolf Eichmann and a bunch of other Nazis planned the Holocaust. And there's a scene in it where they're kind of discussing the um, the mechanics of genocide and like how to get you know X number of people into you know Y number of trains and move them to these camps and that camp. They're like working through the logistics of genocide. And they have like an argument about German law and about whether or not what they're doing is abiding by like the laws that the Nazis have passed and one of the characters says uh, raise your hand if you're a lawyer and everybody in the room raises their hand because it was true like almost <sighs> everyone who was in the room that day was a lawyer and I feel like you would have the same you, you would have the same reaction from the people whose job it is to make Twitter's uh, 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 content lines for things like bleach drinking not that it's the same thing but that scene was brought to mind because yeah you're right it's definitely just a room full of lawyers who have no concern as to whether or not they're actually spreading disinformation, but are concerned about whether or not Twitter is legally liable for the spreading of disinformation, which is a good and fine thing about our system. It's the same one one track mind as the dude that's going to kill COVID with the bleach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, as long as this is this, then I'm safe. Yeah. You're like, oh, you CIA thinking motherfucker. Yeah, um, and it, it's one of those things where it, at some point, the things that they spawn by thinking that way will endanger them. And in fact, already has endangered them, even if they don't see it. But they're still making money, so they're fine with it, which is, again, a cool and good aspect of our system. <laughs> so uh, as a fun aside, so we're talking about Jordan Sather and Twitter's decision to delete some of his tweets. They didn't ban him from Twitter. Um, and it's interesting to me that like they, they're not okay with his call to action to drink bleach, but they are fine about the fact that Jordan Sather has re recently gone mask off with some very Nazi adjacent beliefs. Uh, on March 11th, he tweeted, what is the real virus plaguing our world? And then followed this word with them inside three sets of parentheses, which is a very common way online to signal that someone is Jewish. Uh, this tweet yeah. is still up today. It had more than 2,000 likes the last time I saw it. But oddly enough, Twitter removed a tweet he made on Holocaust Remembrance Day, theorizing that the victims of the Holocaust hadn't been killed, but had instead been taken to work as slaves on an alien base in Antarctica. So I am not sure, again, where the line is there, but it's pretty cool, Billy. I yeah, I, I got nothing on that one. That last one came out of you're just like, oh. Yeah, Twitter's like, you can insinuate that Jewish people are the real virus, but you can't say that Holocaust victims were taken to Antarctica to serve on an alien base. That's our... <laughs> okay, Twitter? <laughs> it's awesome. That's It is awesome. That yeah. is, that's the... It yeah. is awe-inspiring. That is the definition of awe. You're just like, yeah. Ah. It's awesome in the same way that, like, seeing a whale with your own eyes is awesome where it just inspires yeah. this powerful sense of emotion. So back to <laughs> yeah. Mark Grennan and our beloved Bleach Church. Uh, Mark seems to have basically gotten started as the assistant to Jim Humble. And as Humble has aged, Mark appears to have taken the reins of the church and turned his billion-year-old Space Navy veteran boss into a figurehead. Uh, Grennan is not nearly as colorful a figure as Humble, uh, and he's mostly been a secondary figure even within the realm of weird bleach cult people. But after the president's tweet, Mark Grennan leapt into our shared national zeitgeist thanks to reporting from The Guardian. They wrote... The leader of the most prominent group in the U.S. peddling potentially lethal industrial bleach as a miracle cure for coronavirus wrote to Donald Trump at the White House this week. In his letter, Mark Grennan told Trump that chlorine dioxide, a powerful bleach used in industrial processes such as textile manufacturing that can have fatal side effects when drunk, is a wonderful detox that can kill 99% of the pathogens in the body. He added that it can rid the body of COVID-19. So this would be why everyone was tagging us uh, last week, Billy. Uh, they were they were sharing this with us. Yay! Um, so 
Yeah, Billy, that was why everybody was tagging us last week. And one of the major sources for that Guardian article uh, was an episode of the Genesis 2 Church's own podcast in which Archbishop Grinnan and his son celebrate Trump's seeming endorsement of their sacrament. And before we move on and talk about whether or not Mark Grinnan actually had an impact on what Trump said, uh, I want to play you the first minute or so of the Genesis 2 Church's own podcast, mainly so you can hear the reggae musical number that they used to open every single episode, because it is, Billy, this is stone-cold perfection. It's a thorn in the side of corrupt institutions. <laughs> Drop up chlorine dioxide starts a hair revolution. How they duck and they die, spread lies and confusion. What <laughs> in truth we abide, we got the solution. It's a hair revolution. It's a welcome, health revolution. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the G2 Voice broadcast. It is Sunday, April 19th, in the year of the Lord Jesus Christ, 2020. That's what the date is based on. My name is Mark Grennan, and I'm here with my co-host... Joseph Grennan. Isn't that amazing? I've never that seen... I can't... I can't even talk about it, you guys. I mean, now I'm glad I have the... I'm going to send it to people... Yeah, you should. You should. Spread this far and wide. <laughs> it is. I know I shouldn't, but I'm going to because it's the reggae. The, what? It's a health regu- just, revolution. Okay. That's where they're coming. I'm just curious, like, what meeting they had to be like, what music are we going to do for this? Because they had a meeting. They had a meeting. And, yeah, Billy, it makes, when you really think it through. Because I, I have spent, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to talk about how much time I've spent thinking about why the Bleach Cult podcast starts with a reggae song. Um, but I've come to a point where it makes total sense to me. And I'm going to walk you through my thinking. Um, so we all remember, I, I hope, those of us who are, are not 18 or 19, and I'm, I'm happy for all of the Zoomers listening. But, but once upon a time, marijuana was actually really, really illegal as opposed to just really, really illegal in like half the country and more illegal than alcohol in the other half of the country. Um, And in those days, uh, we all thought pot was more of a medicine than it is, which isn't to say that pot doesn't have some can't marijuana. The plant can't be turned into a couple of different uh, a number of different medications. But like we really got into the whole weed is medicine thing and a whole hell of a lot of reggae was focused on like the medical implications of marijuana um, and like how how what a powerful treatment it was. And when you it turns out that when you get a group of people together who all believe that mains, the mainstream medical establishment is like hiding the truth about a powerful medication and the government is conspiring with them to hide the truth about a powerful medication for the purposes of, of profiting. And also those people are all high all the time. It's not super hard to get them to believe that other hidden medications might be uh, 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 unjustly cracked down on by the medical establishment. And that is why reggae makes sense as a music for the bleach church <laughs> that unfortunately that all tracks is yeah. really of everyone i know and want to support sometimes but they make it hard yes i agree Where it's it the, is that is yeah yeah these are salesmen they're very smart that's what they're doing and they're like hey you know what'll work this and you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, let's take advantage of the fact that for justified reasons, nobody trusts the government and nobody really trusts the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and we actually do know that there are a number of, of, of substances with medical properties that were har- that were and are harshly banned for no good reason. Um, so maybe this is another case like that, right? And it's like, I used to love that uh, uh, kind of natural medicine, let, let's all get high and listen to reggae and take mushroom subculture. And, you know, the, the, the overall theme of 2020 has been, let's just, 
let's just take everything you used to love and twist it so that it's horrible and unrecognizable. And it's great, Billy. It's awesome. Well, it's... And that's where they can call it a gateway drug, I guess, now for everything. I didn't think they would could call it a gateway drug for bleach, but they're going to. Because they're going to say it's because they lied about yeah, what it, cannabis really is. So it, now it's, they, and it's why I tried cocaine for the first time after I got stoned a week after, and I was like, oh shit, this one's bad. This one is yeah, bad. Yeah. And it's not that marijuana is a gateway drug, it's that the entire way that our society deals with narcotics um, and also deals with medicine and deals with uh, attempting to inform people about both has led to a situation where it is incredibly easy for nonsense like this to, to get perpetrated. Like, it, it's, it's not not blaming pot or reggae for this. It's all it all no. traces back to the government, um, as most problems do. But in this particular case, the villains that we're speaking about specifically are not, well, mostly are not members of the government. One of them is. That's coming up. So now... Obviously, again, the, 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 the Guardian was right to publish this article talking about the fact that Grinnan and his followers had been mass mailing Trump um, prior to his disinfectant comments. Uh, Grinnan states on this podcast that he sent Trump a letter um, heralding the power of drink and bleach and that like at least 30 of his followers had also sent letters to the president. Uh, and a lot of people online, particularly the folks tagging us, kind of translated this to mean that, oh, Trump was influenced to suggest people drink bleach because members of the bleach church got to him. And as far as I can tell, there's no evidence of this. And it all, I think it's also incredibly unlikely that this is the case. Um, there's actually a picture of Trump staring at like a, an infographic that talks about the benefits of disinfectant and how quickly disinfectant can kill COVID-19 when it's out of the body that was taken right before he went and gave his speech. And it seems like it was probably just like a fucking stream of consciousness thing for him. It is uh, incredibly implausible yeah. that Donald J. Trump has ever heard of Mark Grennan or the Genesis 2 church. And I think it's equally unlikely that he was talking about bleach when he thought about injecting disinfectants. Um now, there's a couple of reasons for this. One of them is that presidents receive a lot of letters, like 30 some odd letters from the Bleach Church doesn't really make a dent in the actual total number of letters he receives. I don't know how many letters Trump gets, but I found an Atlanta News Now article from back in 2009 about President Obama that stated that his administration received something like 65,000 paper letters every single week. Now, Obama had a standing policy of being sent 10 of those letters at random every day. It was kind of like one of the things he did at the start of his day. Um, I don't know if Trump continued this policy, but I doubt it. I think it's kind of unlikely no. he's... Yeah, you don't think yeah. he got up and read what the people thought or read Not entirely anything? certain he can read. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I, I highly doubt Trump read any of these letters, and it's very unlikely. That, like the fact that the letters were sent to him is no smoking gun, just because like he gets tens of thousands of letters every day. Like, um, but it's still it's playing to that same audience. Yes, and his his comments. What's really important is not whether or not Trump was thinking of the bleach church. I, I honestly don't think he was thinking of much at all. I totally buy no. what some people have said, that he was just bullshitting up on the, like he was just talking like he normally talks in meetings and he just doesn't ever think about what he's doing. And so it happened that he was randomly theorizing about nonsense while he was talking to the entire country. And that's kind of what went down. But regardless of whether or not there was any intent behind Trump's comments, uh, yeah, there, it, this was taken as like a signal by a number of members of the Bleach Church. Uh, and I think, um, you know, one <laughs> of them is someone we talked about on our last two parter. You remember Carrie Rivera? Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. She's Great. the woman who made a career out of urging parents to shoot bleach up their children's assholes in order to cure their autism. Um, she believes that autism uh, is, d doesn't need to happen and has a quote unquote cure. And that cure is rectal bleach. Um, now, on February 5th, 2020, as it started to become clear that COVID-19 is going guys, to be. She doesn't have a ton of proof that it works. She's not. No. Her proof that it works it is that shooting bleach into kids and making them drink bleach destroys their intestinal lining and makes them shit out bits of their intestines that kind of look like little bitty worms, which she claims are parasites being cleared from the body. So she's not mm -hmm. great, Billy. No. Nope. 
Nope, no, not great. And like any good grifter, as soon as this pandemic hit, she realized that it was going to be like a big money maker for her on February fifth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course she did. She yeah, is a good yes. grifter. Yeah. Uh, on February fifth, yeah. she published a blog post titled "Good News: Coronavirus Destroyed by Chlorine Dioxide." Um, and her source for this was a study published by the National Institutes of Health. Uh, now, all the study states is that coronavirus in wastewater can be inactivated by high enough doses of bleach. So basically, the study's like, yeah, if there's coronavirus in like a bunch of dirty water and you pour bleach in it, the coronavirus will die. So that's what yeah, the study yeah. said. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could I could I could make claims about the ability of my AR-15 to cure coronavirus in much the same way, and it would be equally mm-hmm. useless in, in terms of medical advice. Um, now, here's how Kerry interpreted that. Quote, The article suggests chlorine dioxide is 100% effective in killing coronavirus. We already know CD, chlorine dioxide, is safe for ingestion by people and has been used for helping the body heal from any number of health conditions, including autism, malaria, herpes, and AIDS. All similar Whoa. illnesses there. <laughs> All have the same cause. Man, if you can get, that's a man. I, I know if I know some friends of mine that it would have gotten that herpes information at the right time would have drank and bleach for sure. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That's probably true. Now, Billy. Uh, this actually happened today, April 28th, as we record this episode, but Carrie very recently published a note to her Telegram group, and we're going to talk about her Telegram groups, uh, referencing directly President Trump's uh, disinfectant comments. Uh, She stated, our time has come. Uh, Why has it been vilified by the media? Why is it that they don't want us to know? Would it destroy Big Pharma's profits since it's an abundant mineral? Um, And basically she claimed that like, yeah. In uh, essence, yes. Yes, it will. If everyone's dead, it will destroy their profits. Yeah. She was right about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it's. Yeah, it's it's cool. So she sees this as a major opportunity to all of the bleach people. It, like two things are true. Number one, it's very unlikely that Trump was directly reaching out to the bleach church, which is, again, fairly small in terms of actual numbers. It would make no sense for him to reach out to these people. Um, and there's no evidence he even knows they exist. Um, but at the same time, all of his rec- very, very recklessly irresponsible comments were taken as an endorsement by everyone who drinks bleach. Um, so both of those things can be true, but it's important to be correct about like what is actually going down here. Now, Carrie Rivera was barred from selling drink and bleach in Illinois in 2015, uh, but she still absolutely makes a living selling chlorine dioxide. She's just developed a way to do that without technically selling the bleach directly. Instead, she advises people on how to drink bleach. Um, and we'll talk about her more in just a bit. <laughs> Carrie is heavily affiliated with Jim Humble and the Genesis 2 Church. And if you want to see the church as something like an MLM, like a, a pyramid scheme, a multi-level marketing company, Carrie Rivera would be one of those like rare distributors and like the top 1% who actually makes money. Um, And I I think that is kind of a good way to view this because it does seem to be sort of like a pyramid scam. Now, Carrie and her felt... Yes? You know what's not like a pyramid scam? Raytheon is exactly like a pyramid scam. You can't guarantee that who's advertising is not a pyramid scheme. You can't guarantee that. No, because... That's we true. accidentally did advertise for a pyramid scheme once, and we apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. And also, the Raytheon. I mean, I do want to say, if you want to become a Raytheon distributor, um, there's actually, like, do you know any small sub-Saharan African nations that don't currently have a way to put down uprisings by mine workers through aerial bombardment? Because Raytheon can help, and you can help sell those products. So, See, my dad... To- I told my dad, I was like, listen, these are bridges I can burn. And he was like, not always. And mm-hmm. he's right. He turns out he was right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't don't burn the bridge. Blow it up with a Hellfire missile from 1,700 <laughs> meters up in the air uh, on the back of a Predator drone. And you can get a 15% commission on all of the Predator drones that you sell to state and non-state actors. You want to sell to ISIS? You know, you want to sell to uh, 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 HTS? You want to sell to the IRA? It doesn't matter. Once you're a Raytheon distributor, you can sell to anyone. Because Raytheon's motto is, we don't have lines. Anyway. (laughs) We have booms. (laughs) (laughs) So go to Raytheon distributor sales.org uh, backslash 
I think they, I think they find you if we're being honest. Yeah. 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 Just put a sign up in front of your house that says I want to sell drones and they'll they'll get to I'm you. I'm into this. It's an yeah, ad break. Find you. Here's our other products. We're back. So, Billy, we're talking about bleach. We're talking about uh, Carrie Rivera, the bleach church, all these salespeople. Um, and uh, again, they all, even before President Trump made his statements, like they took that as like a major endorsement of their their worldview, which is, again, entirely based around the fact that bleach cures all illnesses, um, <laughs> which should, <laughs> should be sillier, but it's not. Um, it's not. So, this is, what's we're, this is what we're living in right now, yeah. guys. Just- Tr- Trump gave these folks a big old shot in the arm, but they were going hard on the bleach uh, before, like, as soon as the COVID-19 pandemic started. And in fact, they did so well at convincing people that, that drinking bleach was a cure for the coronavirus that two weeks ago, the U.S. government sued the Genesis 2 church for violating the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act. Uh, they allege that the church's website, quote, contains claims that MMS is intended to cure, mitigate, treat, or permit coronavirus, which includes COVID-19 and links to testimonials claiming that MMS cures a litany of other diseases, including, among others, Alzheimer's, autism, brain cancer, HIV, AIDS, and multiple sclerosis. And part of what's going on here is really interesting. So the founder, Jim Humble, said a number of times that that, that drinking bleach was a cure, um, and then had to come out and backtrack some of his statements and be like, no, 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 I wasn't saying it was a cure. It allows the body to heal itself, but it doesn't cure anything because he started to get a lot of regulatory uh, attention. And he has kind of faded into the background of the bleach drinking (laughs) scene. He's turned into like... Like, they, they still talk about him a lot, but I don't see much from him directly. Mark Grennan is really the main face. And Mark Grennan has completely ignored the what I would call the wisdom of his, 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 his elder and is just sort of just straight up saying, yeah, this shit cures whatever you have. Um, so is Carrie Rivera. So are, are all of the grifters who are kind of most active today. Um, and this is, again, part of why I don't think that Trump was signaling to the bleach people in particular, because his FDA has been pretty on point about going after the bleach church since COVID-19 hit. I'm going to quote from coverage in The Independent now. On Friday, the government's request for a temporary injunction against Genesis was granted by Judge Kathleen Williams of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. The injunction orders Genesis to refrain from distributing MMS or any other unapproved drug, the Food and Drug Administration said in an announcement. A preliminary injunction hearing is scheduled for May 1st. The named defendants in the lawsuit are Mark Grennan, Joseph Grennan, Jordan Grennan, and Jonathan Grennan. Mark Grennan is described (laughs) by Genesis as its archbishop. While Genesis is currently prevented from selling MMS under a temporary restraining order, the FDA is also seeking a permanent injunction and refunds for people who bought MMS. Genesis was selling MMS online and describes it as a sacrament. Attempting to purchase the product today leads to an error page that says, We are currently in prayer! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. During these difficult and trying <laughs> times, we are in prayer and seeking the, all caps, LORDS, wisdom and guidance. Please pray for us. So that's good. I'm gonna, that's, when you, yeah. that's gonna be my error page on my, my website too. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna just. That's a good idea. Also, have we thought about if maybe these two, quote unquote, preachers, are they're in a contest to see who they can get their flock to heaven first, and that's their whole game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might be what's going on here, Billy Wayne. Some weird, self-aware cult leaders who are betting on who they can Jim Jones their shit fast enough. Faster. Well, you know, I actually there's a lot of comparisons to Jim Jones, and I think there's a number of reasons why that that actually isn't as fitting as people think. Because the 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 people who the the folks who committed suicide with Jones, who drank the Kool Aid, which is actually I think Flavor Aid, um, they all yeah. knew they were taking poison. Like some of them resisted it, a lot of them took it willingly, but they knew that it was poison. Like nobody thought anything was going to happen but that they would die whereas these people are taking poison and think it's going to cure them so this is actually like the heaven's gate people or not heaven's gate um what was jim's jones uh j- j- the the jim jones drink the kool-aid whatever people um they they knew what they were doing they 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 wanted to commit suicide and they took uh functional scientific steps to kill themselves <laughs> what's actually happening here is much dumber <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
it's ah, it's I got ah. it's it's wild. It's a bummer that like we have to be that specific, but like that's where shit is in 2020. It's good. How much of this do you think has to do with all the new technology we have just in the last 30 or 40 years exploded? Yeah, I, I think a lot of this is a reaction to the complexity of, of our society and life. Like one of the things, so there's so many different like interlocking subcultures here, but one of the different like bullshit medicine subcultures that ties into the bleach church, because they're all talking about like, you know, Carrie Vera saying that it cures like herpes and malaria and all these things that are like not even a little bit similar in terms of the way they work on the body and it, like how you actually treat them. Um it, it ties in with like there's this guy who's on Alex Jones's show a bunch um, and who's on uh, Kerry Cassidy, another like conspiracy theorist, like uh, luminaries show a bunch who believes that there's no diseases. There's only like one illness and it's the result of like some spiritual problem. Um, and that's they all kind of tie into that. Like that is a general belief from all these communities that all illness is really just like a spiritual problem. And there's a number of reasons for this. For one thing, a lot of these folks are kind of fundamentally conservative and it allows them to blame sick and hurting people for their illnesses. Um, for another thing, it's just a um, it's I think it's a reaction to complexity, like actual health science is so fucking complicated that if you can just convince yourself no there's only one illness and i only need to do then one thing to protect myself and my family from all sickness uh that is comforting yeah it's the same it's why those people are also usually racist too because it is a simple form of being like i need a color not to like that's what i like yeah yeah no you're exactly right yeah I'm scared of crime and it's not a multifaceted problem that has to be like uh, attacked from a variety of different standpoints in order to actually reduce violence and make a safer world. It's the problem of this group of people. Yeah. Like it's, it's all kind mm-hmm. of the same thought processes. Um, and it it's leads their to melanin. Yeah. It's, it's, it's dumb, but all of the dumb things in 2020, almost all of them are the same dumb, right? Like you, you just have to, trace back what they're actually thinking about um which is cool and good (laughs) it's cool that the technology they've we've made technology easy enough that the dumb can just get it out there to Mm -hmm. whoever yeah yeah there's no no nothing stopping them from just shotgunning their stupid out to the world um, yeah, so Mark Grinnan, who describes himself as a co-founder of the Genesis 2 Church, wrote a letter to the FDA in response to all this. Now, in that letter, he explained, quote, the sacraments are sacred and holy to us, and we use them to keep out to keep our temples clean. In doing so, we've helped millions around the world. We have a lot of testimonies and evidence. It seems if you mention anything can rid the body of COVID-19 is not approved by the FDA, you get attacked. Well, Mr. President, they attacked the wrong church, the Church of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, shit, that church? Yeah. Oh, shit. Now, that last line is real interesting to me, Billy, for a couple of reasons. For one, Jim Humble claims to be a billion-year-old space god slash Navy man and was slash is a again. practicing Scientologist. Say that again. <laughs> Jim Humble claims to be a billion-year-old space god slash Navy man because he was in the Navy, too, the Space Navy. Okay. And his Scientologist, the Space Navy that the aliens had. He was in he, the anyway. Sorg? No... I think it was dumber than that. I don't think he actually did that much time <laughs> in Scientology, but I'm not, I I don't know exactly. Um, yeah, it's one of those, th- like, so, so one thing, it's odd that Mark Grennan, who is the co-founder of Jim Humble's church, um, claims that his prophet, or claims that he's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and also seems to believe that his prophet is a billion-year-old space god, because I think God doesn't like other gods. I don't know. I need to reread the Ten Commandments. That's, he's He's confused, I think. Or, yeah, I like the idea that he's a space alien. Yeah. He came to Earth and he was like, first of all, the Navy looks dope. I won't mm-hmm. get into that. And also, Jesus, this seems real. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty fun to try to trace back all that thinking. Um, so I don't know. I guess belief that Jim Humble I like it. is I'm a in. space I'm god. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's whatever. Now I feel if we go every week, he'll fill in the gaps. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lean too much against that part. Um, but one thing I will point out that does clash directly with uh, uh, Mark Grennan's claims that they're the true Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is some statements made on the Genesis 2 Church's website. See, the government's lawsuit against Genesis explicitly describes 
describes the church as a, quote, secular entity based in the state of Florida. And that's not the government, like, making a judgment and saying, like, no, we've decided as the government that this is not a legitimate church. That's based on how the Genesis 2 church describes itself on their own website. They call themselves a non-religious church with a goal to restore health to the world and say that they were, quote, formed for the purpose of serving mankind and not for the purpose of worship. Which, again, makes it seem odd that they would claim to be the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Now... I found all that really interesting. I think interesting. they lack language. I think they lack language more they, than anything. Mark Grinnan, who, spoiler, has ri- is the one who's written everything that we're talking about today, um, he has a real interesting relationship with language, Billy. So I, <laughs> I hopped on tell. over to the... yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell with the three exclamation points. That's kind of one of his tells. Um, so I hopped over to the Genesis 2 Church's website myself to see what other interesting tidbits I could find, and I can't say for certain who wrote the copy on that website, which looks like a GeoCities site from 1996, but I'm pretty sure it's Mark Grinnan. Um, he calls himself the Archbishop and co-founder of the church. He's one of the only people really named repeatedly on the church. He has an extensive social media presence, and having trawled through his Facebook and some of his other posts, the style of writing on the website matches Mark's writing style on Facebook and in the letter to the FDA to a T. Now, when I visited his Facebook feed, the top post on it was a Unilad video summarizing Trump's disinfectant comments. And the video itself was a pretty normal and uncontroversial piece of of kind of basic reportage, um, just sort of going over what Trump had said and how people had reacted to it. Mark wrote above the video, though, Trump has got the MMS and all the info, Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Things are happening, (laughs) folks. Lord help others see the truth. Um, Now, the post, which is still up on Facebook, has more than 150 comments. And thankfully, most of those comments are people there dunking on Mark Grennan. Uh, There's a mix of anti-Trump memes, a lot of Jim Jones memes, and a bunch of links to actual good reporting on the dangers of MMS and his stupid church. Um, So... I, I just kept going down his his post and for an idea of kind of like some of the other things this guy talks about, one of the links up there was that he shared a YouTube video about Microsoft pat- patenting a chip for monitoring human beings uh, that was like patent number 666, which is nonsense. <laughs> but interestingly enough, that same week, Alex Jones discussed this same fake, you know, bullshit patent story uh, on his Infowars show, which just goes to show kind of how t- connected all these people are. Um, and yeah. It's 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 cool and good. Uh, my favorite post was probably uh, one that he uh, it was a picture of uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci um, with a bunch of text on the image that said hashtag pandemic. There will be a surprise outbreak. Dr. Anthony Fauci stating there will be a surprise outbreak. The coming administration will face. Uh, and this is a link to a video that was also on Alex Jones last week. Uh, which basically pointed out that Dr. Fauci warned that the incoming Trump administration would face a surprise disease outbreak in January of 2017. And a lot of conspiracy folks are saying this is proof that Anthony Fauci is in on the coronavirus pandemic and helped make it. The reality of the comments is that he was saying every single other administration has dealt with a surprise disease outbreak in the last 30 years. So the Trump administration will, too, and we're not ready for it, which is completely accurate and exactly what happened. Um, But. So Mark Grinnan shared this video, and he just wrote a one-word post above it. Uh, R-V-I-L. Ervil. I think he was trying to type evil, but he wrote, he misspelled it. Ervil. <laughs> because that's how, that's how much he's expelled it from himself, is he can't even spell it. That's yeah. how much I hate evil right that's there. That's how I much he hate. I don't even know how to spell it. He's got to call it Ervil. His body won't let him type the E. God, that's it's, so That's how much funny. hate I have. That's so So this is going through his social media as I have is why I'm certain that he wrote what I'm about to read large segments from. So on the Genesis 2 Church's website, there's a segment of the website just titled Our Church, which describes the history and the purpose of the church and is one of the funniest things I've ever read, although I I guess more horrifying than funny in light of its current influence. But I want to just state that based on my reading of all of his other writing off the website, I am certain that Mark Grennan is the only person who wrote this. Like, I will be shocked if another hand touched this prose. And I'm just going to start reading from this now, Billy. Now, you stop me when you have a question, okay? 
There has never been a similar church to this church. There has never been a church of health and healing, insofar as our research has been able to determine. <laughs> our name is Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing. The word Genesis means the beginning. The two, in ex- or in uh, parentheses, two, symbolizes the second beginning. And we look to the words health and healing to indicate that we are working towards bringing health to the world. In most countries of the world, the common law says, and or statutes have been legislated to say, it is a legitimate purpose to form a church to serve God or to serve, all caps, MANKIND in some way. So far, our research shows, down through the ages, it has almost always been stated legally and lawfully that the second purpose of serving mankind is a legitimate purpose for forming a church. Remember, a church is nothing more than a group of people who have joined together for some common purpose. And, as stated above, we have not been able to find any evidence of any other church that has ever been formed to serve mankind, all caps. So that's interesting to me for a few reasons, Billy. For one thing, that's not what a church is. A church is not any group of people who join together for a common purpose, because you could define, for example, the Microsoft Corporation that way. (laughs) Yes, or any Magic the Gathering, or any game of spades. Yeah, any game of spades, a Dungeons and Dragons group, um, which, as far as I'm aware, is not tax deduct or is not um uh, a, a, an untaxable entity uh yeah and it's also i'm i think we're doing church right now we're doing church we are this is church this is a church which means uh, S- sophie can you get my accountant on the line and tell him i'm gonna stop paying taxes yeah okay and they i'm gonna I, i'm gonna move to a shack in the woods and start manufacturing rifles as well and i expect this to be fine with them yeah no problem okay mm-hmm. they cool. love it they cool. love cool they love decisions like that Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think this is going to end well for me uh, and the family that I bring up onto a red colored ridge line with myself. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 I don't know, Billy. I it, it, it's fascinating to me. I'm, I'm I'm really interested in the degree of specificity and focus that Mark Gridden has on insisting that his church is not for worship or religion. Um even though he claims it's the only true church of Jesus Christ. That's that's really weird to me. Um, and I'm not sure why he makes such a point of making this claim, especially since he got all jesus in his response to the FDA. Like we said before, the way he uses language, it's my favorite line in what you just read me was when he was like, according to our research, there's never been a church like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, where you're like, well, yeah. I mean, I've tried to use that answer in class too. Where like, I'm, I'm correct according to all the research I did. And the teacher's like, what research is that? And we're like, ah, it's not going to talk about that part. But <laughs> he refers to his research a lot without citing it. Um, yeah, and and it's interesting. Grinnan really finds it important on his website to state repeatedly that his church is not formed around the worship of any specific god. Uh, he writes, We were formed to serve mankind, all caps, directly. We want to bring health to the world. We will also serve, all caps, mankind in other ways. We intend to help, all caps, mankind extract himself from a world of death to a world of the living over the coming years. It is not a religious goal. It is a realistic goal of having us all live in a decent world, a world where the brutality has finally been overcome where men no longer kill other men for financial gain. Now drink my bleach. Now drink my bleach. Yeah, it all sounds less stirring when you realize this guy's talking about nothing but drinking bleach. (laughs) I'm just trying to help people drink this thing. Drink it. Mm -hmm. Now, Billy... Uh, the desire, though, to uh, for a world where brutality has been overcome, where men no longer kill their men for financial gain. That sounds nice, though, right? Like, we can all get on board that. I don't like mm-hmm. men killing men for financial gain. Mm-hmm. But even a casual amount of of, uh, of Googling brings up numerous stories of brutality carried out by Genesis 2 church adherents. And to tell that no story... No way! <laughs> I know. Surprising. To tell that story, I want to roll back to our old friend Carrie Rivera for a second. Now... It's kind of hard for me to tell what her relationship to Genesis 2 is precisely. I've heard her referred to both as a member of the church and as a former member of the church. She was recently a guest on Mark Grennan's Genesis 2 podcast, where he called her a great healer. So it's fair to say that the church approves of her work serving mankind and trying to overcome brutality and stop men from killing each other for financial gain. And that might 
That last one, at least, might be technically true, because Cary Rivera definitely kills people for financial gain, but most of them are children. So, Jesus. That's good. There's always, like, as, as much as I've heard and been on this show, and you think, like, I know where this is headed, there's always, like, a little, like, just a little curve at the end. Just a terrible, terrible curveball at the end where you're like, God damn it. Well, now, Carrie is our uh, our asshole bleaching lady. Um, That's, yeah, I know, yeah, but still. Fuck. I know, I know, I know. I mean, you know, Billy, if you, if you poison them with bleach when they're kids, it reduces the amount of damage they can do as adults. That's not true. That is not true. Yeah, it actually probably increases it by quite a lot. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, just statistically, probably a number of serial killers being spawned as a result of the horrible abuse they encounter in this uh, cult. A lot of, lot of bleach-based serial killers in about 15 years going to be trawling the California highways. So, <clears throat> since our last episode... <laughs> <coughs> sorry. It's the COVID. I need my bleach. Um, Robert... Since our last... What? I don't like that line. Sophie. Robert, it's time for I an love- ad break. I don't like that line. It's time for an ad you break. You know it'll cure your coronavirus. <laughs> damn it, Robert. <laughs> Did he go too dark? I don't think that's possible. No, no. It no, triggered I, I unhappiness in my heart, though. Well, that's See, the show. See, he, here's my True. thinking, Sophie. Here's my thinking. If bleach cures the coronavirus, which as far as everything I've read has to be true, if bleach Mm. cures the coronavirus Mm. and Raytheon can make a missile with help Mm -hmm. from the good folks at Lockheed Martin that just is made of knives, that whole knife missile thing, if they can make a knife missile, couldn't they make a bleach missile? Yeah. Not couldn't. It's aren't time they? for ads. Why guys. aren't they? Afghanistan and Syria both have bad coronavirus problems, right? You could solve that with enough bleach missiles. It's time no. for our drones to get into the medical business, and the good folks at Raytheon slash Lockheed Martin are going to help with that. So support Let them. Let the people get back to work. Let mm-hmm. the people get back to work. Gentlemen. Get America back to work and back to bleaching. Robert, I would like to keep working South. on this podcast, so we're going to have right, to go to break right. and not say things okay. that incriminate ourselves. All right, products. We're back from outer space. You just all (laughs) walked in to find us here with that happy look upon your face. I'm just going to point out that I'm surprised it's taken this long for that line to happen. It it's in my head every single time I bring us back from a break. (laughs) Now, since our last episode, Billy Wayne, Carrie Rivera has been heavily deplatformed. She's been kicked off of YouTube. Her Facebook is only allowed to share non-bleach related content. Um, and she doesn't really have any other kind of mainstream social media apps. Uh, so Carrie had to follow in the footsteps of all of our best white nationalists. And she had to take to Telegram. She opened several private groups where paying customers could congregate to talk bleach and get paid advice from Carrie. When the coronavirus hit, Carrie Rivera immediately prescribed it to absolutely everyone as a preventative measure. Now, Business Insider uh, has really done some of the best reporting on the whole bleach cult. Like, I, 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 it's not normally an outlet that I'm a huge fan of, but their work on this particular story has been second to none. They reached out to Rivera for a statement about her promotion of bleach as a COVID-19 cure. She responded, quote, if you're sincerely interested in health reporting, you might look up all the medical use patents that include chlorine dioxide as an ingredient. After you've done no, that, maybe we can it. talk. Meanwhile, I'm busy helping my families. And she's referring to like patents for like water purification systems yeah. that have chlorine dioxide at wildly lower concentrations. Anyway, I, I shouldn't even be like fact checking her because she's full of shit. But it's like rat poison being in the LaCroix. You're Look, like, kind of. Now, Billy, <laughs> rat poison kills rats. Rats spread disease. Ergo, eating straight rat poison is a health remedy. And I would like to prescribe as much rat poison as you can fit in your gullet to all of my listeners today. Just really, uh, the church of rat poison not. is opening up. I don't <laughs> condone that. I, don't. I wonder, I bet it would take at least six months for the FDA to shut us down. It would take longer than, like, just as if we did it as a joke, just to see... I think it would make us so sad. We would just be like, we got to stop. They're not going to. This is. I mean, it might, Billy. Times are hard and I need money to buy my compound in Idaho where I could not pay taxes and manufacture illegal sawed off weapons. So 
you know, uh, maybe well, they this don't is... Look, they don't look for that in Idaho, so you'll be... They you'll sure be. don't. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, business insider, uh, obviously, Kerry was not willing to talk to them, but they'd already obtained an into Kerry's online community, as have a number of journalists. Uh, they've like gotten into her Telegram groups um, or gotten access to activists who are in these Telegram groups, kind of watching what Kerry and her fellow bleach cult people are doing. Uh, in one video published to Kerry Rivera's Telegram group, Kerry advises her followers that they can prevent the Rona by taking bleach and drinking it straight from the bottle, by spraying it into their mouth and nose periodically, or by loading it into a humidifier and using it to coat the entire room. A lot of ruined clothes in these pieces. <laughs> um, now, she noted that <laughs> if her right. followers get sick with the coronavirus anyway, which you'd think might suggest that maybe none of this actually works to prevent the coronavirus whatsoever, but she provided instructions for people who get the coronavirus anyway, saying, quote, we can go into hyper mode and we can be doing everything. And by this, she means that people who get the coronavirus should start not just drinking bleach, uh, but drinking it, spraying it into their mouth and nose and loading it into a humidifier. So if you could wrap it around your neck, that would be helpful, too. Yeah, as much like carry it like one of those medieval plague sensors, just like bleach <laughs> constantly spraying down your front. Now, a lot of people, a, sh a heartbreaking number of people, Billy, dozens of them followed Carrie Rivera's advice, which came with predictable and horrific health consequences. Uh, parents uploaded photos of their wounded children to Telegram in order to ask Carrie for advice, and Business Insider republished several of these extremely disturbing excerpts from the chat. Sophie, can you send Billy the first picture, the one that has the picture of the kid? This is a this is is, is part of a, a a chat conversation in the Telegram thread, and someone uh, one of the parents posts, "My son suddenly has a rash. Anybody know what it is? I've never seen it before." And it's a picture of what looks oh, like a very no. painful rash, like right on the kid's chest, um, kind of like on his pectoral area. It looks really really nasty. Um, and Carrie Rivera responded. Herkheimer uh, VS side secondary effect. Uh, CD or any detox protocol item can cause a Herkheimer reaction. Herkheimer reaction is the body saying you are going too fast at the detoxification. And she used the wrong two for that with the one O. Which <laughs> that mm -hmm. might, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that actually counts as kind of responsible because she's saying that they were going too fast with the bleaching of their children, which is very different from her normal responses. So another response that Business Insider included in their article was a parent saying, it's a full moon. My son is aggressive today. Um, and I, I can say as a former special ed teacher, a lot of people even within that field have some beliefs about the, the full moon and it impacting um, particularly autistic kids' behavior. I don't think there's any evidence of that, but it's something that like a lot of parents and even caregivers talk about. So this mom comes in and says, it's full moon. My son is aggressive today. Uh, and Carrie Rivera immediately responds, triple dose. And then in the next oh post, God. enemas, triple dose enemas. That's her. <sighs> That's her response to a kid being a little more aggressive one day than the other. Uh, and I can say that even the people I worked with in special ed who had some maybe non non scientific views about the full moon, none of none of them gave kids multiple enemas as a response to aggression. Uh, mostly no. we had them practice in coloring books. But yeah, um, so My parents are both teachers <laughs> and they would come home. And they would say, I mean, not even about special ed kids. They would just be like, oh, it's a full moon Friday. It's fu they were fucking yeah. out of their minds today. Just that kind of stuff where it's like, that's a common thing. And then for her, to, it she just sounds like that aggressive bro that's like, oh, you yeah. sad today? You need three shots. Bleach that kid's and asshole, do, brah. Yeah, bleach it three times. Kids being aggro, bleach that asshole. Yeah. Yeah. In another exchange, a parent stronger, complains that you're the kid. You're like, fuck mm -hmm. you. The bleach is the strongest of all, Billy. I know. And now, in another exchange in this Telegram channel, a parent complains to Carrie that their child has a fever and a cold after beginning her course of MMS. Uh, they write, we are on two drops of chlorine dioxide. Didn't start enema yet. Kid got fever and cold. What should I do now? Question mark. Can I continue chlorine dioxide? Carrie responds, stay on chlorine dioxide 16 times a day. Chlorine dioxide baths. Chlorine dioxide oral. Chlorine dioxide enema. If eating stops, then only baths and enemas. I can't. Yeah. I... 
it, it, she's an unfathomably evil person and deserves to be fired out of a cannon into the sun. Um, I don't. Yeah. 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 No, I would. So. Yeah. I'm usually fundamentally against the death penalty, but you know, exceptions. If, you know what I mean? Exceptions. This this would be the only proof I would require as a juror for like, yeah, let's just let's just let's just get her out of here. <laughs> let's just deal with this fire, person. <laughs> fire up the cannon. Fire it up. Yeah. We found one. Yeah. We got one. Yeah. God. Yeah, she's a monster. Like that if eating stops, then only baths and enemas. Like you typed that, Carrie. You wrote that with your own hands. And you didn't explode into a ball of self-loathing. And you charged people money for you to write that to them. Like, fucking hell. Yeah. Like, it, it, at least when Paul Manafort funded and helped to spark civil wars in multiple countries, killing hundreds of thousands of people, it, it, I, I don't know how to finish that sentence. Um, I hate them both. <laughs> I bet they. I, I bet they've hung out. I feel like they've been in the same room probably before. They're the same kind of person in that I think that like there's group there's certain groups of people like yeah you know, like you look at these kind of like financial criminals who like ran a lot of the banks that led us into the the 2008 crash and that are uh, definitely in the process of fucking things up again today. I think the right response, the right punishment to those people is to take away all of their money and to make them live like normal folks, work in a normal uh, a straight job, you know, ha- hold down an apartment, right? Um, that's what you do to those people. Uh, that's the worst punishment they can get. And I think that they wouldn't be any danger to mankind if they their money was gone and they just had to be a normal person. And in fact, I think some of them might actually be happier. Uh, but I think there's some people who are fundamentally toxic and who will do whatever because of their need. And I, I don't really understand what the need is, but Kerry Rivera has it. You cannot stop this person from giving dangerous, life-alteringly toxic because kids have, kids have, at least two kids have died taking chlorine dioxide. Kids have been hospitalized and lost stomach lining, specifically from taking Carrie's advice. Um, there is nothing think that will stop my her from theory, doing this. My theory, if we followed her story back deep enough to where her zenith, there is a tree or something falling on her head. Yeah, she's a tree head case, right? Yeah. She just has to be doing this. She can't stop herself. Yes. Fucking, I yes. hate... I, yeah. So, Carrie Rivera's a monster. And I, I'm not a theologian, Billy, but I might describe telling a parent to give their children chlorine baths and enemas uh, if they stop eating. Um, I might describe that as violating Mark Grennan's commandment that members of the Genesis 2 church should work to overcome brutality. That seems brutal to me, but I'm not a theologian, Billy. I didn't go to theologian college theology uh so maybe i'm wrong about that if you're a theologian let us know in the comments if i have if i've gotten religion wrong um i'm going to move back on to the our church explanatory essay on the genesis 2 website quote this is under the section titled our service to mankind consists of number one doing good deeds number two good health for all mankind number three doing what is right which seems like doing good deeds, but I guess it yeah. needed a second. Yeah. Freedom for all mankind, number four. Enlightening others with the truth, number five. Helping one <laughs> another, number six, which also seems like it falls under the doing good deeds it's heading. Number th- it's number three. It's yeah. a third. He's repeat. Yeah. It's tough yeah, to get 10, I guess. Number seven, maintain integrity in all things, which seems like doing what is right. I feel like you've got maybe actually three commandments there, but. I, I don't know. I Again, not a I theologian. I think one, if we're being honest. He's just like, yeah. don't be a dick, would kind of yeah, sum up all his thing. I, I, I guess you could say, don't be a dick, good health for all mankind. Yeah, maybe. Maybe two. But that's still part of being not being a dick, is being healthy. Yep. Take care of yep. yourself. That's, yep. It all falls yep. into that, I think. Yeah, it's it's not a good like really the more I read the Genesis 2 church, the more um approval I have for at least kind of the amount of thinking that went into the 10 commandments cuz those are all very distinct <laughs> yeah. commandments. Um, and they so, applied even if you're not really that yeah. religious. They're like this is a good set of rules you guys. You a can't lot argue of them. that. I'm yeah. not a big fan of the no god but god sort of thing, but like yeah, the whole, you know, not murdering, that's a that's a pretty I'm on board, right? Yeah, uh, man. and hey, that's not your buddy's thy wife. Let it go. Wife. Yeah, fine. Let it go. Yeah, he won. Yeah, there's yeah. there's some good stuff in there that's not repeated. I'm just saying, like, good work, Jehovah. 
solid commandment writing. Uh, Mark Grinnan proves that it's actually pretty hard. So the next he paragraph. He does get the confusing overall religious part of the Bible, though. He gets that part where it contradicts yeah. itself, and he gets that part pretty good. He does get, yeah, the self-contradictory part, and I don't know, Billy, fingers crossed, I think there might be a couple genocides as the result of this bleach church in the future, but we'll, we, we will see. Anything can happen in yeah, 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers well, the crossed. Per- the persecution's coming, so that part is going to come. Yeah. And he's going to, I excited. told you, I told you it's yeah. coming. I I am excited for when the church, the bleach church splits in two from the people who think that you need to use bleach (laughs) enemas along with bleach in the mouth and the eyes to the people who just think you need to drink bleach. And then those two sides start a war and like one group winds up holding up in a castle in the south of France and there's a horrible siege and a massacre. Like I'm fucking really looking forward to that that part of the bleach church's history. That's going to be some good times. The bleach crusades. Oh, my God. Going to be great. I'm kind of, now that if you put it that way, yeah, I feel like I'll be one of those people during the Civil yeah. War just watching, just being like, yeah. they're fighting down on that hill down there. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like the Crusades, they tried to, like it started when they tried to retake Jerusalem. And I guess for the Bleach Church, it would be like Beverly Hills. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that that feels right. I'm <laughs> There's some good hills to watch from too. That's great. There is. Great thing about LA. I'm looking forward to that religious war. So uh, the next paragraph of the Our Service to Mankind section uh, is is real, real good times. Because this is where we finally learn why the Genesis 2 church puts such a focus on not uh, uh, worshiping a god and instead focusing on helping people. And it's because centering their church on any god or gods would distract from the one true god of the Genesis 2 church. Which is, of course, bleach. <laughs> no, no. We do not really? feel it is our mission to teach our members any kind of beliefs beyond the technology of our sacramental protocol water and any other cleansing technology of our healing sacraments. We believe that it is each member's private responsibility to form his or her own religious beliefs, and thus we remain neutral to all the religious beliefs of our members. <laughs> So wow, we don't talk I... about any specific God because our God is bleach slash sacramental protocol water. <laughs> that is. <sighs> I am mad. very. Ex- <laughs> you know, one of the problems this church is going to have is when their equivalent of Martin Luther nails his 95 theses to the door of Mark Grennan's house. All that bleach is going <laughs> to white out whatever they've written on the papers, which is going to make it hard <laughs> to have bleach Lutherans. <laughs> It's wow. Yeah. So after all this, the page goes on to outline the many benefits of membership in the church. Mark states that the main one is that you'll help Genesis to change the world into a better place. He writes, quote, I mean, really change the world. Not all the mamby pamby stuff that the religions have been spewing for the past thousands of years. <laughs> Which is like taking a shot. That's like me cutting an album like in my home using nothing but this empty jug of wine and then being like, this is going to change the world. Not like that Namby Pamby bullshit the Beatles put out. What did they get? A couple hundred million album sales. Nobody knows that shit. Hey, Jude, go fuck yourself. Like, <laughs> Fuck you, pet sounds. Yeah. Yeah. You call yourself the Beach Boys. Nothing says the beach like me <laughs> blowing into a jug. It's 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 great. I, I mean, you got to respect the 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 chutzpah. Now, yeah, the other benefits yeah, that do. Mark lists of joining the Genesis Church include protection against unwanted vaccinations. See, joining the Genesis Two Church uh, means that you are entitled to get a little card with your face on it that you can give to your doctor or to your kid's school, and it states that your religion forbids vaccinations, unwanted uh, X-rays, or quote health insurance mandated by human authority, which I think means that members of the Genesis Two Church get exempt from Obamacare. <laughs> Or presumably whatever single payer system the Euro- the European or Australian ones are under. So that's cool. Uh, listen, here it just feels like the dude start. I mean, it's like any religion. I understand where it's like they keep writing it as the hiccups come along, where it's like, hey, this, some of these people have insurance and they're going to the doctor, and this is really cutting into our sales. So 
let's say that they're exempt from this, so they don't have to go, ah. Oh, yeah, it's... I mean, I, I suspect this is like part of a scheme to try to exempt people from, like, you know how, it, it, I think it, it, this has changed under Trump, but it used to be that, like, if you didn't sign up for Obamacare and you didn't have health insurance through some other means, you paid an additional tax. I'm guessing this is Mark Grennan's way of, like, trying to con people by saying, like, you won't have to pay you know, those taxes if you join our church, which I don't think would actually uh, exempt you from that tax. But uh, that's what I'm guessing is the actual purpose of this. Yeah. Yeah. God said I didn't have to take my LSATs, but I still get to be a lawyer. Oh, Billy, I think you have just hit upon the world's newest religion. Okay. Yeah, lawyerism. This is this 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 is the like if you join our church, you are legally a lawyer and can then represent yourself in court when the government raids your small mountain compound <laughs> because you haven't been paying taxes. I object. Hey, well, lawyerism. If you if, think libertarians argued. Yeah. Lawyerism. <laughs> <laughs> So the next thing membership grants you is the ability to purchase health products of all kinds in any quantity, which I think mainly means bleach in this context. Mm -hmm. So paid membership costs $35 per adult, and you also have to pay like half as much per child, uh, plus $20 per year. And it entitles you to a photo ID that lists your rights uh, and notes that the church will prosecute anyone caught violating them. Mark Grennan notes... Children 12 and below are half price, and each child should carry one of these cards especially to prevent vaccinations. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, so good. So cool and so good. Where are you as a child that you could accidentally get vaccinated? They they believe, I don't think Mark Grennan believes, because I think Mark Grennan's a con man, but they have convinced a bunch of very dumb and scared parents to believe that there's people, like, lurking in the fucking bushes, doctors trying to, like, vaccinate your kids with poison. Um, like, that <laughs> that's not far off from what a lot of these folks believe. So I, I think that's kind of where they're coming from. So, Billy... As we enjoyed laughing about last time, members of the church can also pay to become ministers of health, either in seminars conducted by Grinnan around the world or in online classes. Grinnan notes the training is very thorough and includes doing and using all the sacraments, protocols, on oneself. Each student learns all the technical data of why MMS works and sacraments for most diseases of mankind. Finally, there is an exam to test your mental proficiency of the G2 sacraments. Now, you might notice that the term health minister, which is used by Grennan on the official website, is different from the title Reverend Doctor, which church founder Jim Humble used when advertising the same thing. And this is a running theme with the Genesis 2 church. Responsible like um like like, like journalists who have covered them will note that in different places and by on the websites of different people, MMS is both stated to stand for miracle mineral solution and magical mineral solution. Um which is a thing like respectable medical training establishments always use wildly different terms for the exact same thing. Like, that's a fine thing. It's like how we also call doctors Jimbo Jones, and both of those terms are equal. I don't know. I, I don't know what it's like. It's not like any of these people are scam artists. Now, on his website, Mark Grennan insists that, quote, no one in the history of man has had as much an ability to heal as many diseases with as much certainty. And he's referring to the... Uh, the ministers who train in his bleaching program. Medical doctors, for instance, will in their entire lifetime heal less people than one of our active ministers will heal in one year. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, doctors. Yeah, if all you're doing is pouring bleach in people's throats and calling them cured, that is easier than treating actual sick people. It takes so long yes. to heal a broken leg, Billy. It does. It's, it it's does. incredibly calm. Yeah. 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 Gunshot yeah. wounds, those can take years to heal from. But if you're just pouring yeah. bleach in people, so much easier. These idiot doctors learning how to do stuff like set bones and run ventilators when all they need is bleach. All they need it. That's. Oh, uh, Billy, I just came up with a new hit song for my Better Than the Beatles one man jug band. All you need is bleach, set to the tune of nothing else that's ever been sung before. It's totally <laughs> original. <laughs> I think. Just with a hint of reggae underneath, we got some. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. As much reggae as you can get into a man blowing into a jug. (laughs) That's probably more reggae than you think. So, 
the Genesis 2 church also notes that the kind of certificate that you get is cer- is experience based. So once you've healed 10 people, you can request and pay more for a bishop certificate. So that's really the line to become a bishop. So we could be bishop doctors. <laughs> I don't I'm I'm pretty ambitious, so I I'm in. You know, see, it's one of those things. The state of New Jersey has officially recognized me as a reverend doctor. That's not a joke. That's a thing that's happened. I have the certificate. So I am already legally a reverend doctor, but I could become a reverend doctor bishop, which that's 33% more official. I'm asking anyone that has the power in anywhere but New Jersey, make me a reverend mm-hmm. doctor so we could, so the race is on to who becomes a bishop first. Yeah, and then we can have a bishop Robert's contest. So if you... If you have the ability to to get a state legislature to to recognize someone officially, recognize Billy as a reverend doctor and also recognize me as a bishop. Um, oh, man, Billy, what if I were to move onto a small town in the middle of rural Idaho, start manufacturing illegal weapons, stop paying taxes, and also run for sheriff? Then I could be Sheriff Reverend Dr. Bishop Evans. And I would... I would- could I get? I would like dual citizenship with the United States and whatever you decide to call your sovereign country. Yeah, yeah, we will secede very quickly. I'll like basically <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. I just felt that I would be redundant to say that you would mm-hmm. succeed, but that was like, yeah. oh, I would like dual citizenship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, Billy, I'll- the whole Genesis Two website is a real comedy goldmine, or at least it would be if children weren't being tortured with bleach uh, based on these nonsensical teachings. The next section of the explainer page on that website is simply titled, Who Are We? And it answers that question with, The Genesis Two Church of Health and Healing, a most unusual church. <laughs> Which is not inaccurate. It's very unusual, although the church part I disagree with. Now, this is followed immediately by a quote attributed to Archbishop Mark Grennan. And remember, he's the one who wrote this. So he's wrote this, and he's quoting himself in it. And here's what he quotes himself as saying. Nothing is lawfully right that is morally wrong. (laughs) I I mean, immediately. Let's see. I'm going to kick you in the nuts because you are full of shit, dude. Yeah, Yeah, it's awesome. It's so good that all of this has been allowed to continue up to this point. So the the FDA letter to Mark um, demanded that he stop selling drinking bleach, that he take action to inform his followers that he lied about its powers and that he refund their money. Um, And in his response letter to them, Mark was unequivocal about his rejection of the government's power to stop him from telling people to bleach away their problems. He closed it out by writing, we can say cure, heal, and treat as a free church. Don't need your approval or authorization for a church sacrament. There will be no corrective actions on our part. You have no authority over us. Never going to happen. That's official. Mm-hmm. That's how an official would write it. Uh-huh. Now, that's. Do you think? So, do you think he took that to like uh, a notary to get that notarized? And they're like, I mean, I'll notarize it. I don't. I- yeah, I it, knowing Mark Grennan, his notary would be just pouring a little dabble of bleach on the end there. That's his seal. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's stamped. <laughs> I will say though, in that last statement, Mark Grennan's bleach church is in lockstep with a pretty significant chunk of the Trumpist wing of the American conservative movement, and this is where things get real dark. Uh, Now, I made a point of noting that it's very unlikely that Trump's disinfectant remarks were a direct signal to the bleach church, but that doesn't mean that there's been no buy-in to the bleach cult by powerful Republican figures. You ever heard of Alan Keyes, Billy Wayne? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I have. Dr. Alan L. Keyes, not in any way a medical doctor, is a Harvard University graduate and a veteran of the U.S. Foreign Service. He served at consulates in India and Zimbabwe, and he was made an ambassador to the U.N. by President Ronald Reagan. He is a famed arch-conservative hardliner with a long series of failed election bids and an equally long history of being backed by Republican leaders. Reagan himself endorsed Keyes' 1988 Senate run. I'm going to quote now from the Daily Beast. In 2004, he made headlines for abruptly moving to Chicago to run against Barack Obama, then a state senator. On the campaign trail, Keyes was vocally anti-abortion and anti-gay, infamously calling Vice President Dick Cheney's lesbian daughter a selfish hedonist. After the 2008 presidential election, Keyes became a member of the birther movement, which falsely charged that Obama was not born in the United States. He has since traveled in a paranoid wing of the GOP, authoring articles for the conspiracy-heavy site WorldNet Daily. Nevertheless, Keyes has more mainstream clout than some of his fellow travelers. 
He hosted a short-lived MSNBC show, Alan Keyes is Making Sense, in 2002, and spoke at CPAC this year. So Keyes is, we will say, not the most mainstream Republican figure, but he is very much in the broad Republican movement, and mainstream enough that he got to speak at fucking CPAC. Alan Keyes is also a big old fan of drinking bleach in the Church of Drinking Bleach. He first met with Mark and Jonathan Grennan in August of 2018, and after that meeting, he began increasingly touting the benefits of MMS. His current platform is the far-right video channel I Am TV, which mainly exists to push the work of Dr. Alan L. Keyes. His show, Let's Talk America, is the star program for the network. Alan has had a number of MMS-touting guests, including Mike Adams, founder of Natural News, former Bastards Pod uh, subject, and a regular InfoWars co-host. Another host on the I Am TV <laughs> Network, Robert Sisson, has hosted Mark Grennan to talk about MMS. Now, the good news is that IMTV is still a decidedly fringe endeavor. The channel streams on Roku and YouTube. I can't tell you its exact size, but it has only 300 followers on YouTube. This might lead you to reject and ignore it completely, and I want to caution people against doing that. I'm going to quote The Daily Beast again to explain why. IMTV describes itself as a news channel backed by Dr. Alan Keyes, although that support might not necessarily be financial. Sasan has also described another kind of backing, spiritual support from Uganda. IMTV operates a news studio out of Uganda and has released multiple videos showing Sasan and Keyes in the country together. Although those videos primarily show the pair engaged in church ministry, Sasan has said that they distributed chlorine dioxide to locals. We've been doing this for years in Africa and treating literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people with all kinds of remarkable stories from people who were left to die because they'd been poisoned. Uh, and it cures that in just a few hours. He said in an August video titled chlorine dioxide update. Though IMTV does not appear to have uploaded footage of its affiliates distributing MMS in Uganda, other chlorine dioxide distributors in Uganda have posted pictures of themselves feeding the mixture to children. So that's good. Kids are being, kids are being bleached in Uganda. Thanks to this guy. Um, and I, I yeah. He's got some stake in it then, doesn't he? He's got Yeah, Alan Keyes some... has done has given it out himself. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. got some money in it. That's all I mean, because I was just like, what's his angle here? Because at first I was like, well, maybe it's just like getting the followers some power angle. It's money. He's Ah. Yeah. Now, Ugandan authorities have already ad arrested at least one American pro-bleach activist in the past for poisoning children, which is a real sentence about a thing that happened. Um, this does not seem to have had an impact on people like Sisson and Keyes, though. In an October 2019 edition of Keyes' show, Robert Sisson stated, I'm convinced that chlorine dioxide is going to be what God uses to bring down Big Pharma. Uh, he directed listeners to the Genesis 2 website and told them to buy MMS. Then he went on to add, I do know that it will detox your body and then God himself will heal you. We're, and we're finding in like in Uganda, curing malaria and poisoning and diabetes and AIDS, by the way. It's amazing. Alan Keyes, who is again a recent invited guest speaker at CPAC, listened to this and then stated that Sisson's claims are, quote, why I was so I interested in MMS and going to Uganda so far. So, in conclusion, Billy, the Bleach Church and its prophets are profoundly silly, and they don't deserve to be taken seriously, but the impact and the spread of their dangerous beliefs has to be taken seriously. When we ignore groups like this, we allow them to spread and metastasize through our society. Trump's words have added fuel to their movement. It is no longer an option to just pretend we can ignore these people. And again, the article that just came out today from Vice quotes Carrie Rivera and a number of other people who have been very bullish about Trump's bleach dis or Trump's disinfectment statements, saying in one case, a person wrote, this is a major opportunity to begin a discussion about a timely and interesting application of chlorine dioxide. It's worth noting that the only person not super happy about all this in recent days has been Mark Grennan. Uh, because his church has attracted FDA attention and they seem to be seriously pursuing them. Uh, he wrote recently on uh, the 26th of <laughs> April. Awesome. Yeah, that is good. Um, he wrote on the 26th of April, things have been happening, folks, in the last week or two that is not good. This insanity has to stop. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wrote that three U.S. Marshals had, quote, put a restraining order on our church door. Um, so that's kind of like Martin Luther. So I guess maybe that's our reform um i don't know we Billy. bleached it away but they seem serious about it this story is developing and unfortunately you and i are going to wind up talking about the bleach church again i know i know i know we might never this is stop like, doing updates this is on our the bleach church yeah. and it, it's our penance for all the machetes 
stuff. It you? is. It is. We made a lot of money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's our repentance. The universe is a motherfucker. I will say the FDA has supported and approves of machetes as a treatment for any and all ailments. It is the only one true medicine. So buy a machete today um, and swing it in a wide arc around your body when you go out. And I guarantee you will not get close enough to anyone to spread COVID-19. That's the beauty of a machete. That's facts. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Do we die? No. No, No, we're we're all just horrified. Fucking bummed out. Yeah. So, uh, Billy, uh, do you have anything you would like to plug? Promote? That part. Oh, yes. Uh, Yeah, sorry. Uh, You can follow me at Billy Wayne Davis on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, And then that's where I'll post any new information. And I have a new podcast called Grown Local, which is about the people and places of the cannabis communities around our country. First season is about Eugene, Oregon. Awesome. Yay! Robert, do you have anything that you would like to plug or promote? I have a podcast called The Women's War, which is about a trip I took to Syria that wound up being the most inspiring and least depressing thing that has happened to me in the last three or four years. Uh, And I think it provides uh, an inspiring roadmap for how society could be uh, uh, rebuilt in the face of collapse in a positive and non-toxic direction that might be healthier than a lot of what we're doing right now. So people should take a, take a listen, take a gander. Uh, I also want to note that uh, I have currently this week launched a fundraiser for, there is an organization in Portland, uh, the Portland Diaper Bank, that is attempting to provide diapers to low-income mothers, uh, basically people who can't afford diapers because they're expensive and you need a lot of them for babies. Uh, normally, they're able to collect funds to, to do this for a year, um, but they have recently, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, had trouble getting donations from within Portland. Um, when I started the fundraiser this morning, there were about 10700 raised of their $25,000 goal for the year, and that's a year of diapers for low-income largely single mothers in Portland. They're now almost to 13,000. So please, if you go to GoFundMe and type in COVID-19 response and diaper need, you will find uh, uh, the GoFundMe. Also, if you go to my Twitter profile, I, at I write OK, um, OK, two letters, you will find my pinned tweet has a link to the GoFundMe. So please consider donating, help them out. They could really use it. It's a good cause. There's a lot of necessary causes, honestly, right now. But uh, poor mothers being able to provide diapers to their babies is is a good thing. It's a single problem that can be solved uh, by the people who listen to this show. And that would be one less problem in the world. So please, COVID-19 response and diaper need on GoFundMe. Yay. Yay. That's the episode. Everybody have a good rest of your day and wash your hands. And don't drink bleach. Yeah, avoid, avoid drinking bleach. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Maybe. Maybe a skill. Yeah, like if you're gonna do like a drug test or something coming up. Mm-hmm. I'm just I just don't do that, motherfuckers. I just can't. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the episode. <laughs>